Okay, so now this puzzle has been completely unbandaged, and it was a process. It was a process by which I had to keep pushing in here and doing that algorithm over and over again until I got each side. So that took a while. Um, granted, it would have been a lot better if it was on the outside, but it's done. So now we can just uh, solve it the way that we would usually do. So what I would do, what I'd recommend, this is how I do the Bagua uh, cube, is the first thing that we can do is maybe reduce the centers. But we want to reduce the centers in these areas. So the, uh, the center little triangles that are just adjacent to the corner, the corner pieces, these are the ones that we can reduce. Now, it's not completely necessary to do that, but I think it'll help kind of guide things. And the algorithm to do this is just like that we found with the Bagua cube. Um, but it's going to be a little bit of a variation so that we can translate it to the five-sided puzzle. And what this entails is what it's going to do, I'm going to move this over here, this little triangle piece, this is going to come here, this is going to come here, and this is going to come here. And when it's done, it's going to be in this position. But basically, that's what's going to happen. This to here, this to here, and this to here. Um, and just to review the, the movements, remember, if I do just a small U move, I'm going to call that U plus, and this a U minus. Otherwise, this will just be a U and a UI. Now remember, if I do a 2R, I have to specify if it's a 2R or a 2RI. And the way that this algorithm is going to work is we're going to do a U plus, U minus, and then we're going to do a 2F, then a LI, U, L, then a 2FI, then a U plus, L, U minus. And um, it actually did put it over here. I'm going to move it over to here. But what happened is that this went to here, this went to here, and this went to here. And that's really it. That's what we're going to do all around the puzzle. So if I had to do another green, we can find another green one. And it's got to be a green one that's in an edge piece over here. So this wouldn't count. This actually is just by the, um, by the corner. So we need to find one that's in the edge uh, area over here. So we can just search around. And there's this guy right here. So I'm going to move this into here and do the same thing. So that's going to be U plus L I U minus 2 F. L I U L to F I and then U plus L U minus and that put another one in in this case right over here. So that's what it's going to take, and I'm going to uh, keep doing that. It's a really simple algorithm, and it's really just a matter of getting all of these centers in. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing with that, but do that until you basically reduce the centers before getting into edge reduction. Okay, so I have it down to the last few. You can see that I have most of these on pretty much all the sides. I'm not getting these. These are edges, and that's going to be part of the reduction of that. So with this blue, I've just got a couple more blues to get, like one over here. So we'll do our algorithm. Now, this is not a completely, I mean, thoroughly necessary because we're going to be using these middles anyway, but I, I just find that it, it categorizes them or puts them in a place that I can easily find them, even if I'm going to be taking them out from time to time, as I'm going to use it in reducing these if worse comes to worse. Um, but the fact that it's such a simple algorithm lends to its ability to be used in many different ways, but I figured I'd just take the time to get most, if not all, these in. Okay, so as you can see, my centers are pretty much reduced, and now what we're going to do is we're going to go through edge reduction. And edge reduction is very similar, if not the exact same, as what we did with the Bagua cube. But here's what we're generally going to be doing, is we don't have the lines here, so in some ways it's going to make it a little bit easier. So because we don't have the straight up and down bars that have the different colors that we had to, it's, uh, that we had to correlate it with, we don't have to worry quite as much about it. Um, but what I'm going to try to do is get a center edge piece, get an edge piece. I'm going to put a color here and a color here, and then try to reduce these as well. So this is already in. 
So find one that they already have one in. We're going to try to get a green one in over here. That's going to be to the left. So here's one that's to the left, but I'm going to save that because it's already found a nice green home over here. Here's one over here that's to the left. And the way this is going to work is I'm going to put it on a level that's kind of opposite. And I'm going to be finding where this can move. So this is going to line up with down here. Like so. So you see this is over here. So the key here is when you put this in, you're going to be exchanging it with this piece over here. And just bear in mind that when you exchange it, this is going to flip. That's going to be more, more important later on if you need to not take away something you've already put in this side here. But we're going to move this in like so. Then we're going to exchange this with this by moving it to the side. And then we're going to go, careful, down, down, up and up. Then we're going to move this back over here and now we're going to double turn this back. Now the reason why it's good to have these in is because I can, if I lose track, I know which one, how to line it up because this is where the green one goes. So one, two, boom. Okay, once you have that done, you've got this in. I'm now going to put a red one in here, but I'm going to see if I can correlate it with um, a center over here. So this is a red, this on the right. So I've got a couple here. Um, now let's do this. We'll do this red one, but I'm going to line this red one up with a center. So if I move it like this, it'll line up with the center. Um, so I'm going to find a red center, which is over here. And let's see how we'll coordinate this. When this comes across, it's actually going to line up with the center here. Now i got to be careful. Let's actually just move this out of the way, because I, I fear that this might get in the way. Okay, I'm going to move the red into here, so that when I turn this, this red will line up with this center, this red center. We'll exchange with this piece here. So move it in, move it out over here, down, down, up, up, move this back, and one, two. Okay, so with that said, I now have this, and I'm going to now put this, this in, this in over here. So if I line this up over to here, and let's move this so that it's on the bottom like so and then we just see where it's gonna best line up with actually it's gotta be down here so one two three so if I turn this boom you can see this will be completely well this side will be reduced over here exchange with this turn this over here down down up up move this like thus and then wheel it back and this will be completely fine. Okay, so the next thing is we're going to do the same thing. Line a green with a green center. This is going to be to the right. Now, because this is early, I may already find some things, like right over here. This is already lined up with a center. If it wasn't, then you can either just do, do what I showed, just line it up by that reduction, or I can borrow it from a green center over here and just put it back in by doing that same algorithm to move it over to here. Uh, so you have a, a number of choices, but I like to at least early on get them as reduced as possible And I'm gonna whoop, gotta be very careful if you do, never force a move if you do you're gonna risk a pop and That is just painful an expression of pain Okay, so we're gonna be moving it like this as you can see we're not gonna take any of these out we're going to be moving it into here. Let's see if it lines up, and it does. So this will completely reduce this. So I'm going to hold it like this. It'll exchange with this guy over here. So we're going to go one, two. So that's in. You don't have to worry about this as of yet. We just have to remember to move it back. Move this to the side here at a face that it can turn. Down, down, up, up. Move it to the side, and then turn it back. Now make sure you turn it the right way. This is back in, this will put this back in. So in that way, we've thoroughly reduced this. And that's what you're gonna do all around the puzzle. Find opportunities that'll make it the easiest. This already has a green one here. And every so often, maybe I'll find one that has two that are in, um, but maybe not so much. Okay, so uh, what I can do is put a silver one here. Uh, the silver one is to the right. 
So I'll move this down here. Uh, you know, just for the sake of illustration, this might be easier to show. So this silver one's already in. Let's put a pink one over here. This pink one is going to be the left. This is to the left. So it's the right, it's the correct one. And let's move it down here. Okay, so as I move it, it's going to be moving in this direction over here to slice this through. So this isn't particularly difficult. This isn't the hard part. It's going to exchange with this. So bring it down. One, two. Bring it in. Oop. Down. Down. Up. Up. Now I want you to consider something. We are doing a reductive strategy, right? If we're doing a reductive strategy with hidden pieces, because those straight end, uh, ends are hidden, that does lend to the potential for parity. So bear that in mind. This is to the right. This is to the right. Let's line this up with the center. So what I'm going to do is find a pink center. Um, I could borrow it from this, but I'm going to save those. So let's find a pink center that's not being used. That's this guy over here. Okay. And this is going to come down. Whoop, actually, the pink center has to be here. We'll exchange with this. Uh, now, bear in mind, I don't necessarily want to use this because I, I like the fact that it already has a color here. So I'm just going to move a different one in, like this. Okay, so, because this isn't, this edge isn't lined up with anything. So, one, two, down, down, up, up, move it back. And this is where the strength of the puzzle really lies, because the movement is really actually quite good. And because the movement is so good, it makes this um, a much more fun process. Okay, so now we're looking to move this into here. We just line it up. It's going to exchange with this, well, yeah, with this guy over here. Oh, nope. We'll have to hold it. This is going to exchange with this guy over here. But this will be flipped so it shouldn't touch this over here. So move it up. So this is now mostly reduced. Bring it over here. Down, down, up, up. Move this to the side. And then, so this didn't get destroyed. Move it up over here. Okay, and just to um, demonstrate with this one, I'm looking for a silver to the right of this. Here's a silver to the right of this. Now, you could find a silver, or you can just put it in and take it from the silver center. So let me show an example of that. Um, you know, we could put it in here. But let's say you, you didn't want to do it that way. Let's say you wanted to cut a little bit of a corner here. And we'll just move, we'll just move this in like so. Actually, you know what? This already has one, so never mind. Instead of showing that, we'll just put it in, so bang. So we'll move this like thus. Yeah, so move this in like so, out of the way, down, down, up, up. Again, it, it does move nicely, but be very aware. Now, bear in mind too, when you're doing this, as you're building things in, the only three that you're going to affect is the one that was down here, this one, and this, and well, the one that was here. You're not going to affect anything else, so you can feel free to have those that were already reduced in those spots. They're not in any danger zones. It's only those three that you're going to be affecting. So in that way, we now have these. All right, so we're going to do this all around the puzzle. So uh, I'm going to come back after having done more and just demonstrate a little bit more with that. But that's all there is to edge reduction. It's really not a big deal, um, and it's a it's a nice pastime spender if you're on an airplane for about seven hours or so um, and then I'll come back with you when I'm closer to the to the finish okay I just wanted to point out as I'm moving forward another situation which isn't really a problem but so let's say you have this and you have one that's out so what I did is I put these in then I put this in now this just happened to have a red one that's already in but it doesn't have a center so rather than finding or putting a red with a center another option of what you could do is you could just take it from one of these. So um, if I move forward, I, I'd end up putting an orange one in here, and then I can put the red one here. Then I find another red one like this and put that back in here. So we just do the same algorithm that we had shown before. Turn, turn. 
Okay, so as you can see, this is now fully reduced. We did sacrifice and put a yellow one in, an uh, orange one in rather, but we can easily get that back by using this. So this is another thing that you can do if you didn't want to get the centers in as you were reducing it. You know, those little tiny center triangles. I usually do just because it's not that hard, but you can see it just took a couple of really quick steps to do that. So you can either put it in that way as you just find the little triangles that line up with this and then put it in, or don't even worry about it, just put these guys in and borrow it from the centers here, and then just put it back in, put the right color back in when you get the opportunities there. So it doesn't matter, whatever floats your boat, and we'll continue. Okay, so you can see that we've got all the centers in, we've got a good number of the edges. There's a couple of these um, centers that are not quite done yet. As a matter of fact, I think I, uh, I can put them in. But I have it down to this layer where there's it's the last few of these uh, edges to uh, to deal with. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll get these in first. Do I have an orange in there? No, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to put a beige one in. So what I'll do is I'll move this over here. This will go here, this will go here, and well, don't wanna do it like that. This will go here, this will go here, and this will go here. So this same quick algorithm. Turn, turn. So this reduction is kind of a nice break in that, uh, you know, I can actually put this one in now that I think of it. Because it looks like I have more than a few that are out. This, this, and this. So I might as well start putting them in. This will go here. Okay. Up and turn. Double turn. Anyway, without the bandaging, it is actually a pretty fun puzzle. It's just kind of a marathon, as all dodecahedrons are. Okay, so like I say, we have it down to the last couple. Um, let me just get them close to each other. Uh, amongst the ones that aren't in yet, I think there's a few that I can uh, uh, have like just one to go. So that's that's what I'm gonna focus on. <clears throat> Let's see, is there any more? Uh, there's this guy here. I'm just moving them next to each other so I can visualize them better. Any more? Okay, so as I look at this, it looks like there's just one, two, three, four more to go. So you want to have at least three that aren't in. Oh, there's this guy too. Okay, this one should be pretty easy to put in. I'm going to show you something that I've done to try to set up the next one as I'm reducing this. I'm not going to worry about the centers because the centers uh, at this point is just going to be too hard, too cumbersome. I, mean, I could put it in through here. Um, well, anyway, I'm looking for the purple one, which is right over here. Now, I could <clears throat> match it up with this center. So I guess I might as well do that, just to illustrate things a little bit. So I'm gonna move this down here, and I'm gonna move it into this center. I'll have to turn this up and across. Okay, so it'll match up just like this. Oop. I'm going to put it here so you can see it'll match up just like that. Now, I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to put this in with this center, and then I'm going to have to exchange it with another edge. But what if I exchange it with an edge that'll line up with this green? So this is green. What I want to do is I want to see if there's one that's not spoken for, like this green over here. So I'm going to take this green and put it next to here, but I'm going to make sure that this is right over here. If I put this right over here, then it's going to line up with this when I move it back. So that's just another thing that you can do. Let's see if it can, and it can. So I want this right up here, all the way to the left. So watch what'll happen. I'm gonna take this. So I'm batting this away, where this green is away. Boom. Okay, so I put this here. Move it to the side. I'm not gonna exchange it with this piece by going down, down, up, up. Now when I move it back, you're gonna find that this green is now in position. And now this is in. So that's going to make it a little bit quicker for you, I think, because you're putting more in. You're optimizing your solving with the uh, different movements. So now I can go ahead and move this in. And I'm going to do the same thing in terms of that optimization. So 
Yikes. So if I move this, uh, where am I going with it? Oh. See if I can get this lined up a little bit better. I want to match it with this. Okay, so that means I'm going to come across here. Okay, so when I come across here, this will be in, pretty much I'll be in. Now this blue one, this baby blue one is moved out of the way, so let's find one where a blue one is not spoken for. The sticker is about to lose it. That's all right. Uh, okay, so this, there's a couple of choices here. So let's move this, so let's, let's try this one here. So let's move this out of the way. Okay, so this is going to come here. What I'd like to do, move this more out of the way, is a... Uh, There we go. Is it like to move this blue next to here? Any one of these, really. So I move this like so, and I can see that this blue is all the way closest to this side here. So that's going to actually put that one in at the same time. So move this in. You can see this is mostly reduced. We go down, down, up, up. Move this to the side and move it up. So now this is in. So you can see I've cut down a lot of time like that. Okay, now we have just this center here, so I can go to a yellow center and borrow one from there. Just to make it look all nice. And then I can put another one back in here with another edge piece, like this guy here. So it's all going to work out. So we've got... And I don't have to do this part now, but I figure I might as well. Just to make sure that I have a whole section of that color to use should I need to. And now that I have that in, I'm going to exchange this up here. And now this beige is going to match with this beige. So, one, two, turn, 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 one, two, and this comes back. So this has been put back in. Okay, so let's Let's take note of all that we have left to do, because I think we're down to the last few. <clears throat> and I figure it might be illustrative to go through some of the techniques I've been using for these. Okay, so I still have four that are out, so I can just start moving things in as best, uh, as best I can. So this yellow, why don't we put this yellow in? So I'm going to move this down. I'm not even going to try to match it up with their centers because it's it's easy enough to do. Okay, so this yellow will come here. Okay, so this will come into here. So that's good. Now, this is an orange out of the way, so I want to put an orange piece here. So let's see if amongst the ones I haven't used this. These have a lot of nice oranges to use. Just get this back. This out of the way. Then get this back. Now I would like this orange to end up over here. And boom. Okay, so that's perfect. Perfect because I'm going to go one, two. I've got this orange, this yellow lined up. Flip it with this. Down, down, up, up. And when I come back here, you're going to see that I've got the oranges in really nicely over here. So I actually put the centerpiece in there too. Okay. Now, it doesn't mean that I have to get all of them in, but it wouldn't matter if I did because I, I want to take it down to the last three. But I'm going to be cognizant of what all the movements are doing here. Okay, just getting them together. So I want to put a green one here. So where's a green that I haven't used? Right over here. Okay, so where's my green? Right here. Okay, now let's plan this out. Let's strategize this out. We know that if I put this in like so, we'll be fine. I'm batting a white one out of the way. Here's a nice white one here that I can use, but let's put it next to this. So I'm gonna go turn, well, let's do this right. I just want to go turn, well, that one doesn't really matter. So turn, turn, turn and sometimes there's a handedness to how it wants me to turn it did not want me to turn it that way okay so this will match up with this white so that, that will be placed fairly nicely Whoop. one two yep nope. I got myself lined up wrong somehow right here okay I think one hmm. one two 
two. All right, there it is. And now we do down, down, up, up. And now this white one is prepared to receive. Now, when I first started doing this, I didn't do it like that. But as I'm doing this over and over and over again, it kind of made more sense. So I have this. Now, I might as well put the center in here because it's a quick and easy thing to do. And like I say, it puts my pool of yellows where I can find it, should I need to. One, two, bang, zoom, splat. Okay, now this is perfect because now this green can come into here. Oop. Got a little distracted. Almost lost the algorithm for a second, which would be terrible because there's all this shape shifting that's already happened. Now, if you don't like the yellow being here, we can find another yellow that's not being used, uh, like this guy here. So if, if you just want it for the sake of completeness, which is fine because it does put a center here, so why not? Put this like this, up, across, one, two, turn, turn, turn. One, two, bang, zoom, and splat. And this sticker is not long for this world. I could fix it now, or it looks like it's fairly on there, so I'll just wait. So this is all in. These two are out, and these two are out. But we're not going to worry about that, because here's what we're going to do. We're going to use something else as a sacrificial lamb. So this will move in, and everything will be solved. Well, not everything, but uh, one thing will be solved. We'll have one to go, and here we'll have one to go. So why don't I do this? Why don't I just put another baby blue one? Any one. Because all I worry about is the kite. That's all I want. So we'll search around. We see this guy over here. So I'm going to move this like so. Okay. So in that way, this will move in and greet this guy. So I'm going to borrow this from this whole section here, uh, and that'll be okay. I just need three that have just one that are out. So I'm going to go one, two. This puts all but one in. We're going to go down, down, up, up. Move this here. And now we are dissecting into this, oh, this way. So all but one is in over here, all but one is in over here, and now this new one that I sacrificed, oh, or did I sacrifice it? Everything is in over here. Okay, so, okay, so I have these two, and here's how this is going to work. I need to put this like so. Okay, so this will come into here like that and everything will be fine. But I have to get another blue one to match up with this as it goes back. Okay. So where's another blue one? Right over here. Just like that. Okay, so let's see what happens. So this blue will exchange, so basically this this will end up here, this will end up here, and hopefully this will end up here. So we move this in, so that's good. Down, down, up, up. Move this across here, and now we move this back. This is fine, and this is fine. So in that way, you're able to do that technique to three cycle all of them. So now what we have to do is we have to move these into position, and this is fairly easy. Uh, for instance, this is going to match into one of these guys here. Uh, there's a whole bunch that don't belong, so I'm going to move this over here. This orange will go here, this will go here, and this will go here. Okay, there's no specific pattern with this, just keep finding ones that work. And you'll eventually get it down to the last few. One, two, and you'll have your Mega Minx reduction done. Okay. So uh, we can put this 
back in here, but let's just solve for the white. Here's another blue. Let's go to the green. And actually, as I think of it, I'm just going to put this one back. It would be nice if there was a white one here, but that's okay for now. Turn and one, two, up, down, back, one, two, bang, zoom, splat. Okay, so, so basically all these edges are reduced, but some of these centers are out, and they're exchanged with uh, their other centers. So this pink is here, this green is here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to use the centers here to shuttle them around as long as I can retain the stickers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pink actually it would help if I had a pink and green that would be the best yeah pink and light green if I can find that that will make it easier here it is okay so I'm going to take this I take the pink one and I'm going to move this, uh, I'll actually take the green one and I'm going to move the green into here putting the pink here. So this is going to act like a shuttle to move it to here. So we're going to go U plus L U minus to F, that was an L I rather, L I U L to F I U plus L U minus. Okay, so that put that in. We've got this here, but this can easily exchange with this, so it acted like a shuttle to get those in. So, kind of a neat little part of this. So, this is more just like assembling a jigsaw puzzle using algorithms. Okay, so now we just have this and this. So if I can get the green and, well there is no green and beige, so I'll just use any beige. And I'm going to shuttle that, shuttle that around. One, two, turn, 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 and one, two, bang, zoom, splat. This is all in. Now I have yet to just move this center into the edge. Oh, with the edge into the center. Okay. Okay. And now <clears throat> we'll go ahead and get these in. Turn. 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 This gets this back in here, and done. So you have it now reduced to a Megaminx, or so we hope, or so we think. And the next part of this is simply a Megaminx solve. Now I'm gonna have to assume knowledge on how to solve a Megaminx. If you don't know how to solve a Megaminx, um, this is probably too advanced of a puzzle for you to start with. But I will leave it to you to find your way through that. But in the meantime, it goes a little something like this. I'm getting all the edges in first, and that's done by positioning. So we really just have a, a fairly nice moving Megamix with a couple of hitches and hiccups. So move it down, across, and up, and then we're going to move down, across, and up. Oh, you know what? And bang, there we go. So I'm going to continue the Megaminx solve, and we'll take this to the last layer.